today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Will he leave his religion? You say they get your children removed, shun your wife, and then you just follow along to save his marriage. I understand that hurts you. Does it hurt you? Are you going to stand by your wife and children? Why is his wife ready to walk off? You're going to get up and leave. Because I came here for help. So you're going to decide what I'm supposed to say to you? Good. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Well, for nine years, Tatiana was the member of a strict religious group. She claimed she wasn't allowed to celebrate holidays or birthdays or get an education and felt isolated from family and friends. Now, Tatiana says she wasn't born religious, but claims her husband, Robert, a devout Jehovah's Witness, used her innocence about religion to pressure her into becoming a member. Take a look. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I attended two meetings a week at the Kingdom Hall, and there were hours at home dedicated to indoctrinating the children, personal study, and preparing for knocking on doors. And he graciously gave to him the name over every name. At home, I am expected to be submissive and obedient to my husband. I got counseled several times for the length of the slit at the back of my skirt. The skirt's okay. It doesn't have any slits. It's not tight. My goal as a mother was to make sure that my children followed through with a life of servitude to the faith. I was just raising my daughter to be a housewife and mother. As a Jehovah's Witness, I did believe that Armageddon was coming any day. Because Armageddon was coming, Jehovah's Witnesses don't have any need for retirement plans, higher education, excessive formal education. High-paying jobs were not only discouraged, but frowned upon. I wasn't allowed to read outside literature that spoke badly about Jehovah's Witnesses, and I wasn't allowed to associate with worldly people. It was absolutely restrictive as a Jehovah's Witness. But after about nine years of being in the organization, I started questioning the governing body and I started questioning my husband and that's when the problems began. Well, Tatiana claims the problem is she was brainwashed into believing that only the elders of the congregation can help her. So when she was having problems in her marriage, she claims she turned to them for help but had no idea this would result in ruining her family in the worst way possible and actually having her children taken away. May 2017, I called the church leaders of our congregation called elders to help counsel my husband and I with some communication problems that we were having. The elders came over, we prayed together, we came up to a resolution and after we left, we thought that everything was perfectly fine. Two days later, we got a call from CPS saying that the elders had made an allegation against Robert. They said that there was misconduct between Robert and another child. It was, a term, it was just a misunderstanding. CPS had no proof that I did anything wrong. The next day, CPS came and interviewed my children. During the interview, my son told the investigator that his dad touches him, wears underwear, covers him. The only time I ever touched my son was when I was directed by my wife to check on him. He tends to wet the bed and he lies about it. There are days that my son would hide his underwear or hide his sheets that he peed in, change his sheets, and then sometimes he goes to school and we get a call from the teacher saying that uh, your child smells like pee. There was no sexual component to how we were treating him. Then about three weeks later, CPS knocked on the door around 10 o'clock at night with a warrant to take the children. We tried to reason in with them. We tried protecting our babies. I woke the children up from bed and I packed the bag. I told them that they just needed to go with these people for now. Mommy and Daddy would try and get them back later. I told them to be brave. And it's hard to do that when you have tears in your eyes. After they left, we just fell on the floor together just crying. I didn't understand how they could come and take the kids when they had nothing. Okay, um, let me see if I've got everything right here. You say that your husband thinks of you as less than human based on the teachings of the faith, right? 
still think he thinks of me less than human. Well, that's what you said. I don't think I was referring to him, Dr. Phil. I was referring to the organization. They certainly see me as something less than, as certainly subhuman. I'm marked for annihilation. And you said because he prays for Armageddon, he prays for the end, and you're going to be annihilated at the end. Yes, I am. That you feel like he's actually praying for your death. That would be the natural conclusion of things. <laughs> now, I've talked to a lot of couples. That's a steep hill to climb <laughs> if you got one praying for the other's death. I, uh, yeah. I obviously don't want that to my, my wife, obviously, especially the mother of my children. Um, I feel that um, there is still time between now and the conclusion of the system of things. However, um, I also feel that, that uh, God is a just God and that, um, you know, he <clears throat> reads people's heart conditions and not based on what they actually do in life. So I believe that there's still some hope for my wife. But That's totally not in harmony with, with, with what the organization teaches. You know that, right? I understand what the organization teaches me. So now you're thinking outside of the organization. You know what that's called, right? I am. I'm, I'm based my thinking not solely on what the organization, but what I've been. So now you've got independent thinking. Are. You know that that's not allowed. Uh, okay, um, Doctor Phil. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't give her that moniker because I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not passing judgment on anything. I'm the least judgmental person you'll ever meet. Trust me. It's, it's a hard uh, situation. <clears throat> well, I made a list of all the reasons you said that you left. Mm -hmm. That first one was top of your list. Changes in the doctrine. Yeah, like 1975. They had one foot on the gas pedal, one fo foot on the, on the brake. And what um, was supposed to happen in 1975? The end of the world was supposed to happen. Okay. Armageddon. And, and it didn't happen, obviously. No, it We're didn't happen in 1975. Here. It didn't happen in the four or five other <clears throat> dates that they predicted that it would happen either. Okay. You said there's no looking in places that cause to question. Yes. That, so you're not allowed to, to look at anything that would question. No. It's uh, all labeled apostate <clears throat> material. Okay. And that the organization has God's backing. That's what they believe, yes. They believe they're God's organization, that the seven men in New York, the governing body, are spirit-directed. And you say that some of the kids that go through school uh, are very intelligent and they uh, earn scholarships to elite colleges. Yes. And they applaud them giving up those scholarships. Yes. What's wrong with getting an education? Well... It's just not necessary? They don't believe it's necessary because the end is coming. I have gone to college. So I, I've had that education. Mm -hmm. I don't think, believe that um, it's absolutely necessary when you put Jesus' work first. Uh -huh. Okay. You say you're safe you're, or, you're not ahead. being entirely truthful because you know that if, if, if you wanted to go to college right now, if you want to go home and go to college, you know that you would get counsel first. And then if you avoided that, if you totally ran past that counsel, there would be more counsel, and then there might be some discipline in there as well. I would be Not only that, the lawyers, the doctors, those are people who got their degrees before they became Jehovah's Witnesses. Rarely does anybody become a, uh, become a Jehovah's Witness and then go get a degree. It's almost always the other way around. Jehovah's Witnesses love to talk about, oh, we have lawyers, we have doctors. But they, don't, they always fail to mention the order in which somebody got their education. Do you believe that she is the weaker vessel? Um, that's what the Bible teaches, but at the same time, I also believe that she's, uh, she's been a backbone. All right. Well, coming up, uh, recently Tatiana questioned the beliefs of the Jehovah Witnesses, and now her children are in foster care. She thinks there might be a correlation here, and I have a question for this father here. It is a profound question. It has nothing to do with Jehovah's Witness. It has nothing to do with Dr. Phil. It, has a, a, it is a question from father to father. And I think it may be what this entire situation turns on. It, in my opinion, may be the most pivotal question he has ever been asked. That's next. I left the Jehovah's Witnesses shortly after CPS took our children like all Jehovah's Witnesses, 
Robert prays for the end of the system to come. And when that day comes, all apostate thinkers like me will be annihilated. Basically, Robert's praying for my death. And later... It was all one big misunderstanding. How did I know this? What, did I just make this up? You can't get out that way. Dr. Phil, I came here for help. Yeah, well, I, you're not going to get it. Leave it. When I was seven months pregnant, my kidneys and the rest of my organs one by one shut down. The doctors told me I needed a blood transfusion to save my life. But as a Jehovah's Witness, I would never take a blood transfusion. My husband and I were ready to die for our stance, and we were told to say our goodbyes. But I felt like I lived because I had pleased Jehovah. I was so proud that I was able to stand up and defeat Satan. I was brainwashed. Tatiana says she wasn't religious growing up, but when she met Robert nine years ago, she became curious about his religion as a Jehovah's Witness. In July, she decided enough's enough, too much is too much, and she was leaving the religion and would like Robert to follow her right out the door. Take a look. After CPS took our children, the elders never spoke up to help us in any way. I think it's because shortly after CPS got involved, I left the Jehovah's Witnesses. When I told the elders that I didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness anymore, they told me that Satan had blinded my eyes. Robert chose to stay within the organization, so our daughter and him are both still in the good graces of the organization but no one speaks to my son or I because we're disassociated. Like all Jehovah's Witnesses, Robert prays for the end of the system to come. And when that day comes, all apostate thinkers like me will be annihilated. So basically, Robert's praying for my death. Once my wife left our faith, it became more isolated. I respect her decision. I try not to be involved that much. We spend less time together. Jehovah's Witnesses don't permit divorce except for on the grounds of adultery, physical abuse, or spiritual endangerment. And as an apostate, having left the organization, um, and a spiritual endangerment to my husband. I definitely have plans to stay in my faith. I love Robert. I don't want Robert to leave me. Okay, now before we go on, I, I said I had a what I think is a pivotal question for you. The church has basically shun your wife now because of her position and you're labeled an apostate. Um, you say it's the same thing about your son because he's not the biological father. Correct, yeah. Um, and you may waffle on the words about this, but you went to the elders and had a discussion. You claim they picked up the phone and called CPS and turned you in with an allegation of molestation based on a misunderstanding. And when that was all fully explained, you claim they have refused to step up on your behalf and intervene, correct? Yes. I've always had the attitude, if I go somewhere and my wife and family aren't welcome, then I'm not welcome. And if somebody tells me that I am to shun my wife and children, they can kiss my ass. And I don't care. I don't care if it's a I don't care if it's a church or the government or a school or whoever it is because I don't believe what label or brand you put on a religion. No God that I know, which is a loving God, is going to ask me as a man to turn my back on my wife and my children. And that's got nothing to do, that's got nothing to do with religion. That's got to do with being a man. And I, I just don't understand how you can go to these people and as you claim, they can turn you into CPS, get your children taken away from you, shun your wife, 
get your children removed, refuse to intervene on your behalf, and then you just follow along and say, well, what do you want me to do now? Uh, I, I, I really have a problem with the common sense aspect of that. So tell me what you say to yourself about that. It doesn't feel good, um, that's for sure. I, I love my wife. They, they, she's usually been an apostate, not because she left the faith. There's a lot of people that leave the faith and not label an apostate. She's labeled an apostate because she speaks <clears throat> against the faith. Now I'm just asking you as a man, as a, as a man, is there a point at which, because I've often said, I love the Lord. It's Christians I can't stand. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they, you know, some of them can be really obnoxious. I mean, you know. <laughs> Come on, don't you have some people in your faith that just like, oh, come on, shut up. Because uh, I certainly do in mine. I'm just saying, forget about who they are. These, are. these are men. These are human beings. These are people that walk the earth, flesh and blood. This isn't God telling you to do this. This is somebody that's interpreting God. That's telling you, that's telling you to fail the test. Because you, this is a test. Are, are you going to man up and stand by your wife and children? Or are you going to let some guy that was born in Cleveland come tell you <laughs> that you're supposed to turn your back on your wife and children? And you're going to say, oh, okay, somebody told me that. I've always stood by my wife. Obviously, I'm still with her. I, uh, I give you that. And I, you're here. I give you that. And as far as um, they, they don't tell me what to do. They actually, the Bible says, unless she commits adultery, I'm with her. So it's, it's I, can't, I don't shun her. They're not requesting me to shun her at all. Um, so I, I have to keep this marriage as healthy as I can, living in He's a religious He's talking about house. you shunning me. He's talking about the rest of the church shunning me. You allow it. You stand there. You stand by it. You're okay with it. I understand that hurts you. I do. Does it hurt but, you? But I'm here for you. Does it hurt you? It hurts me that the, that that. But you you is it okay it. for you to align yourself with people who say your wife's not good enough to stand among us? It's hard to hear that. It's it's hard to hear that. Tatiana says CPS has accused her of a long history of abuse, and right now the kids have been removed. She'll tell us about all of that next. If you want to talk to me, sit down. If you don't, leave. What's all this drama? Because I came here for help, Dr. Phil. And so you're going to decide what I'm supposed to say to you? No, but you're making me feel like I'm the bad guy. I want Robert to leave Jehovah's Witnesses so that we can have our lives back. I'm afraid that he's going to remain captive to this organization. He has to leave Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, Tatiana says after nine years as a Jehovah's Witness, she began to question the strict religious group and decided to leave four months ago. She believes it's toxic for her family and she wants Robert to leave the religion too. Now, Tatiana feels the elders are part of the reason they lost their children. Take a look at this and then we'll discuss. Since the children have been taken away, it's taken a toll on our marriage. I see my wife crying. She's devastated. And as a husband, you feel powerless. More than anything, I want my family back. Day-to-day -day life just waking up becomes difficult. Going to work, pretending nothing's wrong. Every day seems dreadful. I haven't been able to go into the kitchen room since they left. It's like when you walk in, time is still. It is hard to live life when you look in your rearview mirror and not see your kids' heads, not see your kids singing to the songs that are playing. I can't even listen to the radio. One of my kids' songs are going to go on the radio. I don't have a vision of them singing to it. I won't be able to bear that. What CPS has done to us not only ripped apart our family, but they took away our identity. We don't feel like we're parents. We feel that we're just him and her. They completely tore apart our lives as a couple. I'm afraid our marriage won't survive if we don't get our children back. Joining us now is Dr. Charles Sophie, who is the medical director 
of the L.A. County Department of Child and Family Services. He is a board certified and licensed psychiatrist, and he is the medical director, as I say, of DCFS here, which I believe is the largest in the country. Yes. You've had your children removed from the home, correct? Yes. And they told you the reason was? Risk of sexual abuse. Did they have any proof that that was the case? No. In the conclusion of the affidavit, it said that they could not substantiate anything and that it wasn't even why they took the children. That in, in the conclusion of the affidavit, it said that they were not taking the children over anything sexual. Well, so why did they take the children? Well, the notice of removal said risk of sexual abuse. Okay, just risk. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, Dr. Sophie, yes. uh, here's, here's something that um, I, I know you know about this, but I'll, I'll quickly summarize it. There have actually been seven cases opened uh, with regard to this family um, across two states. Uh, they have all been closed without any positive finding, correct? Exactly, yeah. Um, April 2017, um, Tatiana called the elders to discuss the marital problems um, and you reported to them that you had come in where Robert was was babysitting and his zipper was down. Well, yeah. He had just gone to the bathroom. How is that looked at? by Department of Child and Family Services, Child Protective Services. They've looked at this case, but then they get the file and see there's been seven other cases, right. even though they've been unsubstantiated. Well, I mean, it's like where there's smoke, there's fire. I mean, there's seven of them, and they're all question marks. The job is to protect your children, even if it's from you. But they were safe at home. Well, you think that, but from I the know outside, that. it doesn't look that way. And it you have to try to see that. I, you, I can't. Okay, but you're going to have to, because if you want these kids back, <clears> it's <throat> submitting admitting that you need some support and help, whatever the dynamic is, it turns on you. So the only way to get your kids back is to be able to come together and submit to them. You said that it was the elders that went to CPS with this allegation, right? The elders are the one that um, originally made the allegation, yeah. Okay, right. but why did you go to the elders with this information? Honestly, I really don't even remember. I just remember calling them for marital problems. I just wanted counsel with my husband. I just wanted help getting have, having my husband stick around long enough to have a conversation with me. That was it. I don't again, it was all one big misunderstanding. I don't understand. I can't tell you much more than that. Well, you're going to have to because that's a real odd icebreaker with the elders to say, I'm here for marital counseling, and by the way, my husband. I don't. Well, how did I know this? What, did I just make this up? Okay, I'm not. Oh, if, oh, well, hold, if, you're, if you're gonna make a dramatic walk out, you gotta go this way. It's, no, it's you can't get out that way, there's no door. You have to go this though, way. I, Dr. Phil, I came here for help. Yeah, well, I, you're not going to get it leaving, but if you do want to leave, you got to go this way. Dr. This is, Phil, this is this is not this is not at all. We have to work through it. I, I am. I gave you all the information that I had. I I can't begin to. If speculate. you want to talk to me, sit down. If you don't leave, I can't speculate as to what what uh, what the what elders is this? said. What's all this drama? What's all this drama? I can't speculate what the elders That's said. That's not what I asked you. I said, what's all this drama? You're going to get up and leave. Because I came here for help, Dr. Phil. And so you're, go you're going to decide what I'm supposed to say to you? No, but you're making me feel like I'm the bad guy, like I did something wrong. My son. Oh, you've done real wrong. Let me tell you. I'm getting ready to tell you some things you've done wrong that if you don't change, you're not going to get those children back. <laughs> you want to hear what I have to say? Say yes. <laughs> Listen, I'm so not going to talk to you into this. We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by. 
Uh, Tatiana says, leaving the Jehovah's Witness, uh, she and Robert don't see eye to eye anymore religiously, and now even more pressure is on their marriage because CPS took their children away for what they claim are false allegations of sexual abuse. Now, during the break, she's been saying, I was promised I was not going to come here and be made to look like the bad guy. And now I'm being made to look like the bad guy. You don't know whether you are or not because you haven't heard what I have to say. And if you think you're perfect in this, you think you don't have any ownership in this situation of your children being gone, and you don't want to hear what your ownership is, then you do need to leave now. Because if you stay, I'm going to tell you what your ownership is. I never is. said that I was perfect. <clears throat> Every parent needs help. And I'm here, I'm trying to get the help. I, we agreed to parenting classes. We volunteered for these things. We volunteered for a lot of things to get the help that we needed. I never said that we were perfect. <clears throat> By all means, we can do better. But there was no risk to the children that they needed to be taken away. Do you want to hear what I have to say or not? <laughs> say yes. 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 Give it to me nicely. <laughs> Give it to you nicely? <laughs> <laughs> you, you act like you're doing me a favor to listen to me. You called me. You said you needed a miracle and you prayed to God and he gave you me. <laughs> I gave you the pot. I gave you the pot. <laughs> and you're looking at a duo here that can tell you how to get your children back. Yeah. I understand that part. And if you keep doing what you're doing, you may never have those kids back in your house. What is it that I did wrong? Just, just what? I don't understand what it is that I did wrong. They're gone for two reasons. One is there's a pattern here where a social worker, a caseworker, looks at the pattern and says, I'm going to err on the side of caution. I understand that to some degree. Let me tell you the main reason, okay? The main reason, and I think we've seen a pretty good evidence of it right today. here today. Yes. The, the minute, roll your eyes later, listen to me now. I haven't rolled, I haven't rolled my eyes. Each time, these people have written these reports and done what they've done, which clearly would piss off a statue. I, I get it. I mean, you read this, it infuriates you, right? So what you do is you then handle them by being combative, argumentative, unwilling to answer, and you write back. Really combative. Listen. I'm sorry. I was talking. Uh -huh. You then sit down and write out affidavits where you go chapter and verse through the report. Like my attorney told me to do. Yes. And criticize them, what they've done, where they got it wrong, how they jumped to conclusions, how, like they, didn't, told me to do. how they didn't do the right thing. And y your attorney told you to do that. Yes. Where are your kids? Where, where are your kids? It's all a process. Even if where even are if, your kids? If I had or hadn't written the letter, if <clears throat> where I had are or, your kids? Still with CPS. But if I had okay. or hadn't written it, I still wouldn't have them. The one way you're going to get those children back is if you play nice with CPS and you say, okay. Let's make a list. Let's find out what it is you need to see here. And you might bite the end of your tongue off 10 times. Yeah. But tell me, yeah. this guy is the head of the largest organization in the United States. Am I telling the truth here? 100%. Do you want to be right or do you want your kids back? I want my kids back. What you're saying that I did isn't what happened. I wrote that for my lawyer. What I wrote was for my lawyer. It didn't go to a court. It didn't go, it didn't go before the judge. What I wrote didn't go before the judge. It was an explanation for my lawyer so that he would have a better understanding. I, I didn't write this out to go, oh, everybody's wrong and it's all just one big conspiracy theory. That was for my 
lawyer only. What's been your attitude with the caseworkers? Difficult. Yeah. So what is it you're arguing? And my point is, is that we have been, we have been willing to cooperate. I, I mean, I told you, we volunteered with the safety plan. We volunteered to go into parenting classes. We have volunteered everything that they, we have volunteered to do everything that they've asked and more. I haven't been out there being the split second I started to tell you something you thought you didn't want to hear, you started looking for an exit. You just couldn't find it, so you came back and sat down. I came and sat down, you, Dr. Phil, because I do want your help. Then you need to hear me. I know how to get your children back in your home. And I'm hearing you, and but I you don't need know that you have all the facts. If they perceive you to be praying for her demise, that throws a wild card into this. Closed captioning provided by... My son has disruptive mood dysregulation disorder and ADHD. The problem with my son faces is when he's at school, he tends to lie. He becomes violent and aggressive. A few years ago, my son opened up his window and he jumped out of it. He told the doctors that I pushed him out of the second floor window. I had to prove that I was at work and that that was, in fact, a lie. CPS did not take into account that my son had mental issues. In fact, they denied that he had any issues at all. Um, that, that makes it tough for the caseworker. And you said, I asked you how you've been with the caseworker, and you said, what? Difficult. Difficult. Yeah. But um, not uncooperative. What? But not uncooperative. I'm, we're volunteering. We want to do what needs to be done to get our kids back. I'm, you I, said difficult. Okay. I haven't been the nicest person, but I haven't, I've been volunteering. Everything okay. that they've asked us to do, we've volunteered you've, ahead You've watched the show before, right? A few times, yeah. Okay. You just said, I said I've been difficult, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, but means forget what I just said. I'm going to tell you now what I really think. Okay, you said I've been difficult. Now forget I said that. I'm going to tell you what I want you to believe. No, You've been difficult. It's there in the papers. I've been cooperative. If I were the two of you and I had been falsely accused, not once, not twice, not three, not four, not four, not five, six, seven, but eight times, I, I would be furious. I'd be spitting mad. And that's where I am. If I wanted my children back, I'd get a new best friend, and it would be the caseworker that made the recommendation. There are 10 things you need to demonstrate, and this is general, it varies state to state, but you need to demonstrate that you can provide a safe, stable, and secure environment for these children that you maintain a loving, stable, consistent, and nurturing relationship with the child, that you attend to the daily needs of the child. They're talking about feeding, clothing, physical care, adequate education, financial support, that you identify and prioritize their needs ahead of your own, that you're a fiduciary for them, that you can empathize with and meet the child's need, that you regulate impulses and emotions that you assist the child in developing and maintaining appropriate relationships and that you exercise appropriate judgment regarding the child's welfare. And that has to do with y'all's relationship. And if they perceive you to be praying for her demise, that throws a wild card into this that they go, what the hell? You two need to present this kind of a front, like unified, and it needs to be focused on these kids here. You couldn't be managing this worse if you tried. Uh, coming up, should Robert leave his congregation to save his marriage? Uh, you know, that's his call, but we're going to talk about what needs to happen on his part next. I've told her she needs to quit being a combatant and start working the system. What does he need to do? We'll be right back.
Okay, I'm here with Dr. Charles Sophie, board certified licensed psychiatrist and chief medical director of the LA County Department of Child and Family Services. He knows how this works. Talk about number eight. Number eight is your biggest problem. So if you can look at that, understand it, and how you can get better control of that, that's how you're gonna get your kids back. Is number eight worthy of taking somebody's children? Yep, it's emotional abuse. Yeah. I'm not abusing my children. The system has been dishonest to us, CPS, okay? So how do you expect us to trust this system when they have been dishonest to us? I didn't say you have to trust it. You don't trust it, you work it. You just work it. <laughs> you all don't get it. You all don't get it. You want to be right, we want to be successful. You deserve to have your children, I, I believe that. I want to make a quick touch base here before we go. Uh, Steve Guzik is a therapist with Freedom of Mind Recourse Center and professor of psychology specializing in helping people born into strict religious groups. Now, he can relate to Tatiana because he too is an ex-Jehovah's Witness. What would be the top two or three things you would share uh, with Tatiana at this point? Yeah, so I would share that there's always hope. You know, spending 25 years born and raised as a Jehovah's Witness and then coming out of the group, I understand what, what Robert and Tatiana are going through right now. And, and the idea and the concepts that are running through their head just, just in this conversation alone of the dogmatic indoctrinated you know, rules and regulations that are going through, how are they going to answer to the elders for what they said on the show, you know, that all will will go away in time, Tatiana, and the love and the relationship can heal, because I work with people like this all the time, it is you have to heal yourself. And once you heal yourself, you can help other people. And Steve, you said that you would be willing to offer Tatiana and Robert some help in sorting through all of this with her leaving uh, this particular group, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what we do at Freedom of Minds. We help people coming out of groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses and other type groups. So thank you. I'll, thank you. I, I hope they'll take you up on that. You're welcome. Have All a good right. day. Closed captioning provided by... Just quickly, Cynthia became a Jehovah's Witness when she was 13 years old but left the religion over three decades ago and says her entire family shunned her. She started a support group for ex-Jehovah Witnesses. Cynthia, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, well, you've been listening to this today and a lot of it sounded very familiar, right? Exactly. I've seen where one party or one person has tried to leave and the other one wants to stay in. Um, one of the one of the persons in the marriage, one of the partners needs to give the other person room. I've been doing this for 45 years. I'm telling you what you have to do to get your children back. But I'm sure we're both wrong. I, never said that. I want to thank all of my guests today and a special thanks to Steve and Freedom of Mind Resource Center for more information about today's show. Log on to drphil.com. So, thank you so much. Wait just a minute. You have to stop right here. Because during this show, I learned something really fun. Jasmine. Who's Jasmine? Right here. And today is her birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. 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 I thought you could have a, a picture <laughs> as a surprise. Oh, here. Take a picture. <laughs> happy birthday. Hey. Perfect. You're not Perfect. Perfect. Is it, is it impolite to ask a lady how old she is? No, not at all. Okay, how old are you? 37. I don't even remember 37. <laughs> okay. It's beautiful. You're going to give her a birthday present? Yes, I actually do want to give you a birthday present. It is one of my skincare products. And I'm so proud that you are not afraid to tell your age. So I thought, face it, you look amazing. And it is full of polynutrients. Helps tone and brighten your skin. So I'm going to give you... 37 bottles of it. Yes. Happy birthday. There you go. Happy birthday. Yes. Right. Thanks, guys.
In honor of your birthday, why don't you give that same, what is it? Face it, you look amazing. All right, we'll give that to everybody in the audience. And if you at home want to get it, go to RobertMcGrawRevelation.com. You can find it there. RobertMcGrawRevelation.com. Thanks.